as they would like to. First Peter chapter one, first Peter chapter one, verses 13 through 16. How many love Jesus? Amen. Yeah. Amen. God is good to us. I don't know why my phone's making noise, but we'll fix that. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fasting yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And I'd like to preach tonight for a little while the title of a message, A Life of Holiness. A Life of Holiness. Reverend Palmer, sir, please stand and pray. Father, we pray you tonight for the, for the service. We thank you for each one that is here, oh God. Continue, Lord, to have your way in the remaining of the service. Lord, continue to be with Pastor as he ministered unto us this evening, Lord. And most importantly, Lord, we ask that you help us to accomplish your will. We'll give you all the praise and the glory in your place. Amen. Amen. You know, it's sad that in our current society, that many times you cannot tell the difference between a Christian and a non-Christian. You begin to think about this, this is a very sad edict indeed. I really believe that there should be a definite difference between a born-again believer and a non-believer. How many concur with that tonight? Yeah. And I really believe that there is a prevailing problem that plagues the church world today, and that is the church is allowing more and more of the world in rather than getting the world out. We don't need the world to reach people for Jesus, amen? amen. And the Bible is very clear that we, as the children of God, that we are not to love the world. And I'm going to say it again, we do not need the world to reach the world for Jesus, amen? amen. Many times people think, well, we have to allow certain things in the church to reach people. No, you know, God came to deliver us from this present evil world. Can I get a witness? Amen. Why? Because Christianity, you know, think about it. The Christianity that many people have experienced was full of criticism, was full of anger, full of abuse. I wish I could say that everybody was living a good Christian life, but that's not the case. A lot of times the people that, when they encounter other Christians, they're not encountering anything different than what they already have. It is very, very important that you and I live differently from everybody else. Christ has saved us and Christ has delivered us. Now that means that we need to live on a different level, praise God. I understand that we are only human, but you know the God that lives on the inside of us is a supernatural God that enables us to live on a different level. Praise God. We should no longer be full of criticism. We should no longer be full of anger and abuse and hate. And when we allow this to be a part of our life, it truly is a reproach to our loving and holy Savior. And so the questions are these. Where is the peace and where is the love that Christ has taught us? How can we live this way and how can we show it to the world? And I believe that many people have made the decision to make Christ their Savior. But you know what? Is that all there is to it? Are we just going to say, all right, Jesus, come into my life and I want you to be the Lord of my life and that's it. Can we go on about our life and the same old business, safe from the fires of the hell and continue in the life that we once lived? No, there has to be a change in our lives. Amen. Are you going to come to church with me tonight? Yes. I know it's 101 degrees outside, but it's not that way in here. Amen? Amen? We read to you tonight there in 1 Peter, and we read about how that we are to be holy people. Holy people that are saved by God. And you and I, if we are saved, we are to live a life of holiness. And so this begs the question, what then is holiness? What does this mean? We begin to tell people we need to live a holy life. And so when you tell them that, it conjures up an image in their mind of, of some monk hidden away somewhere in a monastery reading his Bible. Or maybe some old pious little old lady sitting around reading her Bible with her hands folded on her lap and talking sweet things. And you know what? I believe there's so much more to living for God than that. Can I get a witness tonight? Uh, a lot of times people are afraid of the Word of God. 
Why? Because the Word of God puts demands upon our life. And the Word of God demands that we live a holy life. And I'm going to tell you right now that we do not have to be afraid. And we do not have to back up from these things. Praise God. But what holiness really means. It's not the clothes that we wear. It's not the way we fix our hair. All those things might be part of living for God. But what holiness really means is that we are changed. That we are set apart from the world to God. This is what holiness means. I've read to you many times in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. He said, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is what? A new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. You know what? Praise God. If we are in Christ, we are new creatures. Amen. Oh, that's so sad. It's so sad because you're a new creature. Well, become a new creature. You're not sad anymore. Amen? Right. So this means, all right, so follow, follow with me, right? We get saved. We give our life to God, right? That means that there should be a difference in our lives after salvation, correct? Right. It's impossible for your life to stay the same. It can't stay the same. There has to be a difference between us and the world. And so many times Christians don't get it. They don't think that, well, all right, I've asked God in my life. I'm going to live the same way I used to live and go to heaven. No. Wrong answer. We have to change. Amen? Amen. Now, how many really want to go to heaven? Amen. Amen. Praise God. We want to go to heaven, don't we? Yeah. Well, we have to be living a holy life. What is a holy life? A holy life is one that is totally committed to God. God is holy. Now, we all want to agree that God's a holy God? Yeah. His holiness Demands. Now, God's holiness demands my commitment and your commitment to holiness. We just can't walk around saying, I'm a Christian. No, we have to be committed to the holiness of Almighty God. Now, in John chapter 5, verse 8, Jesus, he healed the man, crippled man, in the pool of Bethesda. The man was crippled. Jesus healed him. And then later on in verse 14, Jesus said, Behold, thou art made whole, sin no more, lest the worst thing come unto thee. Then, Another place, Jesus forgave the woman caught in adultery. He said in John 8 and 11, Neither do I condemn thee, go and sin no more. Now, two different cases. The crippled man at the pool and this woman caught in adultery. All right? There's something that's very familiar here between these two passages. Notice something very evident. They were both forgiven. How many are thankful for the forgiveness of Christ? They were both restored. Amen? Thank God for a restored relationship with God. Amen to that? But they were both told to live a different life after salvation. They had a meeting with the Lord. God touched their lives. And God did something for the miraculous. And he said, go your way and sin no more. You know what? God has saved us. Hallelujah. Yeah. And God has restored us. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God, right? Yeah. But you know what? God, now I like this. God does not require perfection to fellowship with him. Amen? Otherwise, we're all short and lacking, are we not? Amen. All right? He doesn't require us to be perfect, but I do believe that God expects us to be serious about it. Right. I think that we need to understand the seriousness and the gravity of living for God. There's a lot of people that, that do not grasp that. It's just a game to them. It's just something to do. It's just somewhere to come to get some Kool-Aid and a cookie or whatever, have a good time and, and go bowling on Friday nights or whatever the case may be. But we need to be serious about our relationship with God. Amen. Now, we're serious about a lot of other things, right? People are very passionate. And even in the world, people are passionate about things in their life. Well, what about Christians finally saying, wait a minute, let me wake up do what I'm supposed to do, live the way I'm supposed to live, and be serious about my relationship with God. Church, this is not a game. Right, right. We have to understand that we need to be serious. Holiness is following God's commands. Now, I really like this. Holiness is living a life that is pleasing to the Lord. You know what? Let me tell you something. You don't have to worry about pleasing the pastor. If you just please God, everything's going to be all right. Yeah. If people would live their life conduct their lives and wait a minute I want to be pleasing to God 
I want to be right with God. You don't have to worry about anybody else. Now, when you start living your life committed to God, there are other people that are not going to like it. They're going to find fault with you. They're going to criticize you. They're going to come against you. But you know what? Let me tell you something. Stay true to God. Stay true to God and say, God, I'm going to live my life pleasing to you. And I'm going to tell you, if you do that, man, hallelujah, everything's going to be all right. Amen? Amen. And then it's good to gather together for worship and fellowship. Amen? Amen? I believe that we need to meet together often, support one another, encourage one another. But that's only beginning. We cannot leave Christ at the back door of the church. Right. We come in the house of God. We're blessed. Amen? Amen. We can't leave Christ in here. Right. We gotta take Christ out to a lost and a dying world. Praise God. Amen. We can't leave him at the door. So really, what does this practically mean to us? Now I'm not just talking about soul winning, okay? Though I believe that every one of us should be involved in soul winning and outreach. Right. That's really not what I'm really talking about. God must be a part of all of our life. Right. God has to be a part of your work life. Your family life, your friends' life, your big decisions, your small decisions, your big problems, your small problems. We need to allow God to be a part of all of it. Right. It happens many times why Christians have a hard time is because they get saved and they live for God and they leave God in the church. They come here, wherever they may go, they may pray a little dab, and they leave God here. And they do not allow God to be a part of their life. We need to allow God to be a part of every aspect of our life. The, the family, the home, the relationship, everything. God has something to say about everything that we do. And we have to say, all right, God, I want you to come in. And I, I don't want to be just a Christian in, in profession only, but also in the things that I do. And so my exhortation to you is do not leave Christ here, but take Christ with you on the job. Do they know that you're a Christian? At your schools, at the places that you go, and the various things that you undertake, do they know that you are a Christian? And when you begin to think about a holy life, one that is totally given over to God, one that is surrendered to the Lord, you know what? It, seem, it can seem a little bit radical when you first look at it. Why? Because people fear about giving themselves up. But I think what we need right now is some radical Christianity to show people that God is real and God's not dead. Amen? They don't want to give up themselves. But you know what? When we got saved, we gave up ourselves. You know why people don't want to do that? Because they're afraid of being weird. Well, if I live my life for God, people are going to think I'm weird. If I do this, they're going to think I'm strange. Well, they're going to talk about you anyhow. So you might as well just go ahead and live for God. They're going to think you're weird anyway. Well, sometimes the feeling is mutual, right? Right. We think they're weird too. But you know what? You might as well just give yourself to God and live for the Lord and be blessed. Amen? Amen. A holy life. How many want to live a holy life? Amen. <laughs> a holy life is grounded in God's wisdom, under God's direction, and it, the result will then be a life of peace, a life of joy, and a life of assurance. Don't you want joy in your life? Yeah. It's joy unspeakable and full of glory. Don't you want a life of peace, a peace that passes all understanding, the assurance of knowing that one of these days uh, when I close my eyes in death, I'm going to open them up uh, and see the face of my Savior, the one who has seen me and loved me and took care of me. Amen. Man, I want to go to heaven. Amen. Man, I've been doing this too long now. Man, it'll be 38 years in October. Man, I want to go to heaven. I'd hate to preach like this and, and miss the boat. I don't want to miss the boat. I really want to go to heaven. I want to hear those words, enter in, thou good and faithful servant, enter into the joys of the Lord. Amen. The Bible says, narrow is the way. Right? He said, few of you that find it. That's very, very, what's the word I want to use? Mind-boggling. There's a lot of people that claim to be Christians. But he said, there are few that be that find it. I want to be on the broad way, amen? Amen. I want to be on that narrow way. And the only way to do that is to live a life of holiness, grounded in God's wisdom, 
when it makes no sense to the rest of the world. Look to the wisdom of God. And he tells us there in James, he says, any man lack wisdom, he said, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and upgrade it not. God's not going to jack you up for asking for wisdom. Get down on your knees and call out to God and say, God, I need some wisdom. I need some guidance. And let the Spirit of God guide and direct you. And the Bible tells us that as many are as led by the Spirit, they are what? The sons of God. God, I need Need some help. God ordered my steps. The Bible said the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. The steps of a saved individual. God, guide me by your spirit. God, I need direction in my life. He said his word is like a lamp unto our feet. And we need to allow God to illuminate our pathway so we will not stumble, so we will not fall. And you know what? We need to get to God and we need to be grounded in the wisdom of Almighty God and say, God, I'm going to do what you want me to do. Amen. Let God guide you. Let the Spirit direct you. I know that we live a life, there's a lot of things that come against us, and it's easy to become jaded. Well, what does that mean? It's easy to get an attitude. Right. Amen? Amen, sir. Don't, don't become that way. Stay tender in your heart to God. Stay tender. When we get that little bit of hard heartedness going on, ain't nothing going to happen. Right? right? Then you allow bitterness and offenses to come your way. So my exhortation to you right now by the Holy Ghost is to stay tender in your heart to God. Amen. Stay soft in your heart. I'm going to tell you what, things will happen. And people will come your way. That will absolutely push you to your limits. Right. Am I the only one here talking that's for real? They'll, 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 ooh, they'll push you. The next thing you know, you're like, what's the point? What's the point? Never get to that place. Find a place to pray. Say, God, tender right my heart one more time. God, I want to stay in love with you. God, I want my heart to be softened to you so that I will not become a heart to the things around me. God, I need your wisdom. God, I need your help. God, I need your touch. How many need a touch of the Lord right now before you leave? I know there's not a lot of people here tonight, but there is a God in heaven that wants to meet with you right now. And you know what my Bible said? We're two or more are gathered together. I'm counting right now. There's more than two of us in here. That means Means that God is here. Don't let him pass you by. Reach out and touch God and let God touch you and say, God, I want to touch right now. Amen. I understand it's been a week, people are tired, but you know what? Praise God, my God's not tired. God's not dead, he's still alive. Mm, let's go on. A holy life is in complete harmony. With God's plan for each and every one of us. You know, not only do we need to be firmly grounded in a personal, ongoing, intimate relationship with the Lord, we need to reflect His love to the world. Right, right. Let me tell you something. Sometimes Christians can be some of the hardest, judgmental, meaning people there are. All right. Uh oh. One time years ago, I mean, I'm talking 35 years ago, 36 years ago. That's a long time ago. That's pretty good since I'm only 28. I was with Pastor Davis and this guy was driving, I was driving Pastor Davis. Pastor Davis is the founder of our organization. Some of you know that. He's already in heaven. And on one of these days, I'm looking forward to seeing my Jesus and seeing Pastor David. Amen? Amen. The other saints of God that have gone home to be with the Lord. This man drove by. He had a big old stogie hanging out of his mouth. Right? And I said, oh, look at that, Pastor. That man even claims to be a Christian. So here I am, being my pharisaical way. He looked at me and he said, he was right there. He looked at me and he said, at least he's not a God hater. And he looked out the window in the other direction. And God, by the Holy Ghost, smote my heart. I said, man, I'm judging that guy for his cigar. I don't really think he should be smoking cigars. I don't smoke. But you know what? I was wrong. Right. I was wrong. I was being judgmental. Maybe he was having a battle with him. You know what? We all have things we got to work on, don't we? Right. 
Rather than worrying about that, why don't we just reflect the love of God to a lost and a dying world? Just because people don't fit into the box that we want them to fit into. All right. Oh, don't look at me like you're not guilty of this at times. We want people to fit into our box, into our ideas. But when it comes to something in our life that we need help on, no, preacher, I'm good to go. The Bible says the ways of a man are right in his own eyes. Right. He said, but the Lord pondereth the heart. God knows. So just because someone doesn't fit into our box, the way they, we think they should act or behave or conduct themselves, we're ready to write them off. I'm glad that my God has been written me off. When I've come short, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Right. We need to reflect his love to the world. I'm not talking about accepting sin or compromise, but I still believe we need to love everyone. Amen? Amen. Because the Bible said, and such were some of us. Uh, praise the Lord that God saved us. He sanctified us. He justified us by the blood of Jesus Christ. Right. We need to be different in our behavior. In our goals and our desires. Again, I'm going to say there needs to be a difference between the believer and the unbeliever. And I don't think that you should need a long witnessing session to prove it. I just think that people want to see there's something different about us. Amen? Amen. Talk's cheap, right? We need to be preaching Christ constantly to everyone every day and using words only if necessary. One man said the only Bible that some people's ever going to read is our life. Come on. He said in some cases it needs to be a revision. I said, oh man, that is so awesome. You know what? We need to live the correct way. Amen? Amen. Matthew said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. I like that. They may see your good works. No, 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 preacher, don't talk about works. No, works are still necessary, praise God. Amen. People don't want to talk about works. I understand we're saved by grace, but we still need to glorify God with our works. Amen? Amen. A holy life pleases a holy God. Let me ask you the question. Did your holy life today please a holy God? Hmm. Preacher, I did pretty good today. I knew I was coming to church. What about yesterday? How was your attitude yesterday? It really food for thought, isn't it? Well, I was fine until this person. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me that we're going to allow other people to control what we do and how we live before God? Now that's real, that's really, really hardcore stuff right there, right? Just because if this man here doesn't want to do right, you know, it might be wrong. And I'm not saying he's doing wrong. I'm just saying I'm choosing him because he's right there. But if he's doing wrong, it has nothing to do with my walk with God. Right. If I'm doing wrong, it has nothing to do with his walk with God. Are you tracking with what I'm saying? My walk with God is an individual walk with God, a personal walk with God. Amen? Amen. So that means that if you all are doing wrong, well, yeah, I'm sad about that. That would hurt me. But you know what? It changes not my relationship with God. And so we have to come to a place in our life where we say, wait a minute, I'm going to have this relationship with the Lord. I'm going to live my life before God regardless of what anybody else does. Amen? Amen. Do you understand what I'm saying? Why allow other people to regulate your life before God? A holy life reflects Christ to the world. But how do we live a holy life? You know what? One of the first things you have to do is to be in complete obedience to God. And when our wills and our life and our submission to his, God can then work on us. But when we are stubborn, when we are hard-hearted, when we are hard-headed, when we're just, you know, stiff-necked, God can't work in us because we will not allow him to work in us. We come to the place in our lives where, God, I want you to work on me. God, I want you to show me. God, I want you to mold me and shape me. How many, how many would want that in your life? Right. Now, when you pray that, be sincere because God will answer that prayer, and I'm speaking from experience. God, shake me. God, mold me. We must be.
be filled with the Holy Spirit. We need the Spirit of God in our lives. When our own sinful nature rules us, we then grieve the Holy Spirit. I'm not, you know, I'm talking about constant living. You know, when we are constantly living an unholy life or sinful life, we are grieving the Spirit. We have to say, wait a minute, I am not going to live this way. I'm going to make up my mind. I'm not talking about occasionally falling into a temptation and immediately asking God's forgiveness. I'm talking about willfully, day in and day out, against knowledge, against the Word of God. You're just doing your own thing when you need to know, and you know that you should be doing the right thing. We need to pray and repent. Amen. Think of it this way. Accepting Christ is a choice. Right. Correct? Living a holy life is a choice as well. And we need to make it every day of our life. All right, we accepted Christ as our Savior. Praise God, right? Yeah. That's good news. Well, the choice. God does not force himself upon us. We make the choice to live for God. Well, living a holy life is a choice as well. What are you going to choose? Are you going to choose an unholy life? Or are you going to choose a holy life? Are you going to live a life dedicated to God, obedience to God, or one that is in disobedience to God? The choice is yours. Right. The choice is mine. It's up to us. We are not our own. We belong to Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 19 and 20. He said, what? No, you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and you are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Here it is again. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. We belong to him. Amen. Who are we? Listen, folks, who are we to call the shots? Well, it's not conducive to what I want. The problem is what you want. It's not what we want. It's what God wants. I'm going to tell you right now that when we walk up around you before the Lord, God is going to bless us. You see, I can stand up here all day long and tell you this, but you're never going to find that out unless you come to a place in your life where you surrender to God and you begin to experience the blessings of God. And you'll never understand that until you do it on your part. Again, I can talk to I'm blue, blue in the face, but it will do no good until you make up in your mind, I'm going to live for God. Amen? Amen. Next thing you know, you need to talk to God in prayer. I believe that we need to praise Him. Amen? Amen. Thank you. Ask God for help. And most of all, are you ready to this? Listen to him. You know, even Jesus, as we read in the Bible, found it necessary to pray. And sometimes we know that he prayed even all night long. And I want you to know, we needed a whole lot more than he did. We need to pray. He said to pray without ceasing. And then in Psalm 92, verses 1 and 2, he said, It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises. Are you in church with me tonight? Yes. And to sing praises under thy name, almost I, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. Hallelujah. It is good to give thanks unto the Lord. Yes. You know what? Is it not? Can we not just get down on our knees sometimes and say, God, I have nothing to ask of you tonight. I just want to thank you. I just want to praise you. I just want to glorify you, God. I want to thank you for saving me. I want to thank you for touching my body. I want to thank you for touching my mind. I want to thank you for taking away my sin. And <coughs> I want to thank you. Then I can cough this thing out. Amen. I want to thank you, Jesus. No, we want to go to God and say, gimme, 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 and then get mad because we don't get it. Why don't you just get down on your knees and thank God? Yeah. An attitude of praise. An attitude of thanksgiving. Not an attitude of being disgruntled all the time. Yeah. Right, right. And then we need to be immersed in God's word. Why? Because it holds the answers. The word of God gives us direction. Word of God gives us wisdom and understanding. Psalm 119, verse 11, he said, Thy word have I hid in my heart, why? That I might not sin against thee. So we go to the word of God. All right, we need God's wisdom. We pray, talk to God, take that word, hide it in our heart. You'll never be able to hide the word of God in your heart unless you read it. Amen. Right? You need to read it, hide it in your heart. 
Psalm 1, verse 2. He said, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Hide it in your heart. Meditate upon it. Psalm was even writing, he said, well, I was using the fire to burn. Well, I was thinking about the word of God. Well, I was hiding it in my heart. There's something begin to happen. The fire of God begin to burn on the inside. Church, this is what we need to do. We fill our mind with so much garbage. Right. Come on now. These things right here are a blessing, but they be a curse as well. Right. What? Who we got to find out? Facebook got to say. What? They didn't like my Facebook post. Now we're in a battle because somebody didn't like it. You know what you might need to do? Get out of Facebook and get your face in the book. Right. How does that sound? Yeah. Well, I got mine on my phone. Well, however you want to do it, get, the, get your face in the Word of God. Amen? Amen? And find out, God, what would you have me to do? God, I need your Word to help me day in and day out. Yeah. <clears throat> the Word of God is the most direct way that God talks to us, showing us the eternal principles of how to live a holy life for Christ. I don't know how to live. I don't know what to do. Get yourself in the house of God. Get yourself in the word of God. Find out what do I have to do to make it to heaven. I want to go to this place. Man, how many of you ever read about heaven? You read about it. Man, you get excited on the inside. Right. At least I do anyhow. And in my mind, I try to envision what it's going to look like. And I know that we cannot even begin to imagine how beautiful it must be. And I want to go. You start thinking about heaven. You start thinking about God's throne and the heavenly creatures. Holy, holy, holy. Remember I was teaching in the Bible study about a vision of God. Man, you begin to see it and you're getting your mind's eye what it's going to be like. Man, church, how can you help but not to live for him every day of your life? And then you get excited at it. And you're not like, you know, we, nothing that we go through down here is worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed unto us. We, hear, we read about in the book of Romans one of these days. Uh, and as you begin to read this, uh, and you get excited, you get encouraged, you get discouraged, get your face in the book. Having a hard time? Get your face in the book. You don't know what to do? Get down on your knees and pray and get your face in the book and find out what thus saith the word of Almighty God. Then we find out what we need to do to comply to his holy word. We have to understand that holiness is not just a bunch of series of do's and don'ts. We're a holiness church. And sometimes people, they just think that's just a bunch of legalistic ways and do's and don'ts. Living for God is more than just a bunch of do's and don'ts. It's not just a bunch of rules. Because if all you're doing is keeping a bunch of rules, that's all it is to you, a bunch of rules. I'm talking about a holy life, living the way that God wants us to live. Holiness must begin in our heart. You know, I started doing things when I got saved, and that's not because some preacher told me. I don't have time to go into it. And I, there were things that I already knew without the preacher telling me. And there were changes that I, had begin to, I began to make in my life. No preacher told me. But as I stuck around, I found out as he began to teach and as he began to preach, wow, now I understand. You see, God, by his spirit, was already dealing with my heart, letting me know, don't do this, don't do that, live this way, change. Why? Because I got saved. I genuinely got saved. And God did something in my life. And I know what God did and that no man did it. And I really appreciate that because God God showed me and God helped me. And I know that my God is not a respecter of persons. And if God's going to deal with me, God will deal with you the same way. If you would just open up your heart and your mind and let God be real. And I'm telling you what, God through the years has been real. I say, preacher, have you ever heard his voice out of heaven? Uh, maybe. Maybe not. I, there have been times God's dealt with my heart where, where it really the Holy Ghost seemingly was tapping me on the shoulder. So you need to fix your mind. Well, I'm in a job. I had to go to the restroom to pray and repent. Seriously, I don't have time to go into all the detail. And, and, and I know what God deals with my heart and how, how God dealt with me about things. You know what? It's not just a bunch of rules and regulations. God 
wants us to change and go higher. Amen? We need to get out of this lower level living and go higher in the Lord. Amen? Amen. If it's not in your heart, all you're doing is following a bunch of rules. It's more than rules. We need to conform to the character of God and be obedient to his divine will. Now notice this, it's the natural sequence to salvation through Christ. We get saved, what's the next thing in the sequence? Living a holy life. It's the character and conduct of a new creature in him. So, all right, sinner, salvation, a holy life. Follow it in order. You're not made holy by doing a bunch of rules. We are made holy by the blood of Jesus Christ. It's the power of the Holy Spirit working in a life that is submitted to Almighty God. A holy life. A life of holiness. It's sequential. That's the way that it is. One step after another as we prepare ourselves to go to heaven. And you know what, church? Tonight could be the night when Jesus comes back. It's time to live a life of holiness. As you bow your heads, please, close your eyes in reverence to the Lord.